we're talking about being fragmented and we're talking about the loss and the isolation of not feeling attached or allowed to be your own person. And, and that's all you're doing, right? You're, you're just making art. As you said, you're just an artist. You're not fighting the government, but they have seemed to be so uncomfortable with your work. Do you think it's primarily because you're showing womanhood or Iranian womanhood in a way that they find too uncomfortable or too salacious? I never thought that culture could be such a weapon <laughs> and a threat to the order of society and to the governments. And I think it's fascinating if you look at the Iranian society in the last several decades, that while we've had a very oppressive situation, culture has just been thriving. And artists have been targeted by the government because even though we have no freedom of expression and support, etc., they have made some of the most subversive work that not only has become very significant in their own country, but has flourished in the world. As an artist today, I'm a strong believer that movies, arts, theater, music, anything that is creative, um, it's a major contribution to this dialogue that we're having in the moment of crisis. Uh, I, I take what I do seriously because I'm not biased and I don't have an agenda. I grew up in Australia. I grew up around a lot of white people. I grew up post 9-11 and I didn't see any Muslims that were making art that were exciting, that were pushing boundaries, and then, I, and then I found you. You're not just Iranian or Muslim. You're also uh, an artist in exile. You're an artist that's living in New York and have been living in New York for so long. And one of the most exciting things about talking to you when I, when I featured you for Cultured was the way that you embrace New York. And I want to talk about that as well and how New York is just this place where so much magic can happen. I feel like I live this fairyland because in one hand, I am the product of um, the underground culture in New York. I moved here since 1983. I, I lived here when Bohemia was just thriving. But I also, um, I come from a country that um, you know, to this day, I'm working in my studio almost entirely with Iranians. My husband is Iranian. My family are still in Iran. I work in Egypt and Morocco, and uh, a lot of my, my thinking process, the roots of my work, have been based in the Middle East, and, um, and I, it takes me there because I, can't, I have never been able to make work in America about America until recently. So a part of me is rooted in, in issues that I'm still conflicted about as I have an unresolved relationship with Iran and the Middle East as a Muslim, uh, as, as a Middle Easterner, um, and, and, and questioning the, the socio-political, historical, but also my own relationship with that part of the world that I don't quite want to disconnect. Because it's true, this New York is really where I'm consider home, this is where I had a child, this is where I got married, this is where I became educated, this is where I was introduced to conceptual art, um, this, are, this is the place where I got introduced to magnificent artists, but yet the, a part of me is so deeply rooted in a culture that has no idea about Western um, you know, arts or contemporary arts. I'm finding myself psychologically, mentally, intellectually, emotionally conflicted between two worlds that are opposite in every way you can possibly imagine. And I speak every day to my mother in Iran, and she has no clue what my life is like here. Uh, and I just pretend like I, I can imagine her life in Tehran. And she tries to pretend what my life is here. But they have nothing to do with each other. That is the very core of my work, is that kind of divided, kind of uprootedness of being one, the sense of duality that everything I make is about notions of opposites, whether it is about landscape, geopolitical, or cultural differences that I feel in every day that I live, 
I live a kind of a lie on both ends. Mm. Uh, I could be sitting in front of you and act like a New Yorker, but I'm really an Iranian. And when I'm with Iranians, I feel like I'm not really Iranian. I'm really a New Yorker. And I don't say American, I say New Yorker. How do you step away and how do you make art for yourself? I'm glad you brought this up because one of the problems I have is when my work first got introduced in the West, particularly in America, people felt that my work was about the Muslim world and they, immediately that I was the ambassador or the speaker about you know all women in the Muslim world, especially when I made Women of Allah, which was, if some of you have seen the pictures of the women that were militant with the weapons, you cannot imagine the kind of descriptions that I got. And I had to over and over again say, these images are very specifically about the Islamic revolution in Iran. These pictures are very specifically about women who are religious and very submissive to the fundamentalism that was brought by the Islamic revolution. This doesn't even represent all the Iranian women. And on the other hand, people of Iran were appalled thinking that I was making this work to be controversial and sensational by promoting violence. And the government of Iran found it problematic because they felt that I was criticizing them. It's really difficult to, to navigate in the way that you feel that you are doing your job almost like a sociologist, like really focusing on a very particular issue and subject that really is interesting. But other people jump into it and then take it uh, generalize it into something that they wish to do because they refuse to broaden their own information in terms of the broader picture. It's also the pressures of being the first one, right? Like you were thrust into the scene and everybody had their own ideas about who you were and nobody, it seems like, I, I read a lot of those early pieces about your work, especially Woman, in, uh, Woman of Allah. It seemed like nobody was really asking you how you f or like if they were asking you it was like a short quote it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't like this where you're like explaining and you're you're talking about it yeah. i mean a lot of people thought that i had some kind of answers what people don't understand is that the work that i made was simply to raise a lot of questions frame a lot of important questions. Like the woman of Allah was about the concept of martyrdom. It, on the philosophical, beside the ideological level, like how do people arrive at the place in a mental state where they're willing to die and kill uh, on those idea of religious faiths, uh, especially women who were equally um, doing that. To me, that seemed like a really valid question. Living in New York, how could I even be close to knowing the facts. I don't, I'm not interested in the truth. I don't, I'm not interested in documentary, especially living outside. The only thing I could do is frame certain questions that I think are important, are important whether you live inside or outside. And Iran doesn't belong only to the people who live in Iran, it also belongs to me. And so my argument was, look, I'm not saying I know something that you don't. I'm not saying that this is how Iranian people are. I'm not trying to inject this image about Iranian people to the Western culture. I'm just raising some questions. And I think those are really valid questions. That's why those pictures to this day are very relevant because the questions remain unresolved. And that's what's interesting, that the art survives, but the interpretation does not.